I am working through the organic reactions section of organic chemistry in the 2019 chemistry paper. This section focuses on the reactions that happen between organic molecules. And the first question in this section is question 1.2 in the multiple choice, which reads as follows. Which one of the formulae below represents the product of a polymerization reaction? where a polymerization is where a group of monomers combine to form a large or macro molecule. And the most common way in which we write a polymerization is where we show what the repeating unit is in brackets, where we then use this letter N to say how many of those repeating units are stacked end to end, which means that the correct answer for question 1.2 is option C. The organic reactions question is then usually question 4, where question 4 reads as follows. The flow diagram below shows how, how compound A can be used to prepare other organic compounds. The numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 represent different organic reactions. Use the information in the flow diagram to answer the following questions. What I would advise that you start by doing is looking at the flow diagram and getting an idea of what kind of compounds we are forming and working with. So the first thing that we can see is that compound A and compound C are similar in that they must all have three carbons. And the same goes for our primary alcohol here, where we can show a three carbon chain, where when we have been told it is a primary alcohol, Primary alcohol means that the hydroxyl group should be attached to the first carbon because a primary alcohol is one in which the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group is only attached to one other carbon. We can then also see that the only way that you could go from some compound to a primary alcohol and also to an alkene is if we start out with a haloalkane, also known as an alkyl halide. Now, it is not entirely clear which carbon the halogen group is on. I am going to, for the sake of this, assume that it is on the first carbon, although that's not entirely necessary. So here we can see that we have an alkane, a haloalkane specifically, that undergoes what must be an elimination reaction to form an alkene. And we know that when an alkene undergoes a hydration reaction, the double bond is broken, and that then allows us to form an alcohol where we know from the rule that we must follow when breaking double bond which is Zaitsev's rule that says that the hydroxyl group will always be excuse me the hydrogen will always attach itself to the carbon that had more hydrogen so that means this carbon would get the additional hydrogen, which means that our hydroxyl group would then be attached to the second carbon. What we can then see going down this side over here is that we have a reaction between a primary alcohol and what we can draw here to be sure, but what we can see is a carboxylic acid. And we know that as soon as a alcohol reacts with a carboxylic acid, we are going to form an ester. So now we can, once we have this understanding, it's easier to approach the questions. 4.1, name the homologous series to which compound A belongs. And as we have said here, compound A, in order for these reactions to be possible, must be a haloalkane. It is also acceptable to call this an alkyl halide. Question 4.2, write down the type of reaction represented by the following. Important to note here that type would normally refer to addition, elimination or substitution reaction, although it can be unclear at times and so what we advise is that you identify both the type and the specific name for each reaction. So as an example at 4.2.1 we can see here we go from an haloalkane to an alkene which would mean that this is an elimination reaction that, strictly speaking, is the type of this reaction. But because we cannot be sure what is being asked here, we would normally just add there that this is specifically a dehydrohalogenation reaction. 
So once again, type normally refers to addition, elimination or substitution, but because we cannot be sure, and when you look at the memo, you'll see that both of these are given as options, we often would then say it is an elimination reaction, specifically a dehydrohalogenation reaction. The same goes for question 4.2.2. Reaction number three, here we can see we go from a haloalkane to a primary alcohol, that is a saturated compound to a saturated compound, that is only possible through a substitution reaction. We know that we can identify substitution reactions by seeing that there are no double bonds made or broken in that reaction, so that means that it must be a substitution reaction. And specifically, this substitution reaction is one where we have replaced the halogen with a hydroxyl group, and we call that a hydrolysis substitution. Four point two point three asks Nate, what type of reaction is represented by four, and as we've said, the reaction between a primary alcohol and a carboxylic acid is always going to be an esterification reaction. In this case, esterification is the most correct answer. That is esterification, although it is also acceptable to say that the type of reaction here is an elimination reaction. But for this specific reaction, we require esterification. Question 4.3 reads as follows. Consider reaction 3. Write down the two reaction conditions for this reaction. And so reaction 3, once again, we can see is the reaction from a haloalkane to a primary alcohol, which we know already is a substitution or a hydrolysis reaction. There are Strictly speaking, there are three conditions for this reaction. Any, any two of those three were accepted. So we could have said either mild heat. We could also have mentioned that there needs to be a strong base present. The strong base would usually be sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, although that's not necessary to state here. And the third condition that is accepted is that H2O is required. Again, the question only asks for two conditions, so only give two of those conditions. 4.3.2 then asks, what is the IUPAC name of the primary alcohol that is formed? And as we've stated here, primary alcohol, the hydroxyl group must be on the third, on the first carbon. There are three carbons in this chain, meth, eth, prop, and so we can call this propan, one ol, because we know that alcohols get the suffix anol, and we need to indicate the position of that hydroxyl group. Question 4.4 asks, draw the structural formula for compound B, and as we've seen, compound B is the result of a reaction where an alkene is converted through a hydration reaction into something which is obviously going to be an alcohol, we know that a hydration reaction is one where a hydroxyl group is added. And the important thing to note here, we can draw our three carbon chain. The important thing to decide is where that hydroxyl group will be attached. And once again, we would use Markovnikov's rule here, Markovnikov kind of being the inverse of Zaitsev's rule. Markovnikov's rule will tell us that the hydrogen is going to attach to the carbon that has more hydrogens already, which is carbon number one, which leaves the hydroxyl group to be attached to carbon number two. Very important to remember that whenever you are asked for structural formula in an exam, you must include every single hydrogen to ensure that every carbon has formed its maximum number of four bonds. Question 4.5 then reads, Consider reaction number four. This is, as we noted earlier, the esterification reaction. Uh, write down the structural formula of organic compound C. An organic compound C, as we have stated, is the ester that is formed between propan 1-ol and ethanoic acid. And so we know that an ester, when it is formed, the alcohol, the three carbon chain in this case, is always only attached to the single bond oxygen where the ethanoic acid is going to be attached to the double bonded oxygen 
as well. And once again, important to remember that every single carbon must have its four bonds that are formed and you must draw in every single one of those hydrogens as they have bonded. And then question 4.5.2 asks the name or the formula of the catalyst that is used and we know that the catalyst that is always used in an esterification reaction is sulfuric acid. They have asked for either the name or the formula, so either H2SO4 or sulfuric acid would be accepted here. I would advise that you get used to this structure of questions. It's very common in question four where you are given a diagram that shows the relationship between a number of compounds. And it is also important to first consider your answers, consider how these are related before going on to the questions because the questions can sometimes be confusing. And then finally, when you are asked for the type of reaction, once again, you are encouraged to list both the type, elimination, substitution, addition, write that first and then be more specific and give the name of the specific reaction, those being hydrogenation, dehydrogenation, halogenation, etc.